in a world that has gone digital, there are people that can get left behind. And I know you as a church leader, you don't actually want that to happen. And one of those groups that you're thinking about is probably the seniors in your church community. Hi, my name is Joanna LaFleur and I'm from WordMain Digital. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to do communication in the digital age for seniors. Thanks so much to Canadian Center for Christian Charities for making this tutorial possible. Today we're talking about how to communicate to and with and for seniors, older people in your congregation in this increasingly digital world. So I want to offer you a few things to consider. Tip number one for communicating to seniors and maybe fairly obvious uh, is to do both do digital and do analog print old methods of communication to carry them both we're in kind of a transitional period in history and the technology that we are using and so we're having some people who are completely native and comfortable in the new way of doing things in digital and all things screen and some people who are really struggling to get there and may not even have a computer or access to email or anything like that so as we make this bridge when we're thinking about church communications because we want to care for and shepherd the people we serve we may need to actually just do both if we're in a community that has a lot of seniors that aren't very tech savvy. And so do both means you can have things online, digital first, you wanna be thinking about websites and things for screens, you wanna be thinking about where to register online, all that kind of stuff. But you may also then want to do things uh, on print, you know, on places that people who are senior might be more familiar or used to having seen and receiving their communication. So tip number two is if you are doing registrations for things online, I want you to make sure there's also a phone in option. So wherever you're communicating or promoting an event or something that people need to uh, sign up for or get more information about, make sure you have a phone number, a working phone number for a real person who they can talk to if they pick up the phone and call. A lot of seniors are very comfortable talking on the phone. And if they just had somebody on the other end of the line in the church office who can be the person sitting on the computer registering them for that event as they provide their information over the phone or just offering more information about that event by phone instead of by email or having to search around on a website that's going to go really far with your senior population so wherever you're communicating make sure you offer not just a website off option but make sure to offer something like a phone number that people can use to actually reach a human being Third tip is to think of something like a concierge service in your lobby or your foyer at church. What I mean by that is if you've announced on a Sunday and you're meeting in person that there's going to be some event or there's going to be some thing to buy tickets for or to get involved in or to sign up for or whatever that may be, if they need more information and you're pointing people online, that's fine, but make sure that in the lobby or in your welcome center, your information center, there's a actual human being who can concierge them through. So literally, if you have an iPad on a stand, make sure that there is a person who is friendly, who is tech savvy, who can meet any senior who comes. You can even explicitly say so in your communication. Have them go to the person on a Sunday in the lobby who's gonna guide them through step by step and how to register, how to get that information, how to give if they're doing tithes and offerings, whatever it may be. But don't expect that they know how to do it without someone helping them. So wherever we have technology, if we can offer a friendly volunteer standing at that place to serve people, it's gonna go a long way with seniors so they don't feel frustrated, confused, or even give up. Tip number four is something that actually not a lot of people do, which is consider having a senior or a few seniors on your communications team. If you're building a communications team, usually that's full of young people who are really savvy with TikTok and Instagram and video and all that kind of stuff. But consider having a senior on your communications team. They're going to offer you insight into what you think you're communicating and then what you're actually communicating in a way that you may not have thought of before. Now, maybe you don't want um, uh, senior people in your, in your community to dictate things like 
uh, design, aesthetic, color, and taste, and things like that. But what they can do is things like, for example, when I was leading communications in a church and the seniors offered me feedback that the font was too small. I had never even thought about it before because, well, I wasn't a senior. And so that was feedback that was so easy to implement and to change. With seniors giving input to the communication team, we're able to quickly make that font larger and more accessible to everybody in our church. But I never would have known that if I didn't have seniors adding input to my communications team. So make sure to get some input from seniors in your community about how you're doing in communications. Number five, let's talk about phones again. This is something that used to be commonplace in churches and I don't hear of too many people doing anymore, but you can revive it for the seniors in your church and that is a phone tree. That's where you know one person calls five people and each of those people are assigned to call five more people, five more people, and suddenly through the branches, you have now called everyone who wants to be called. Uh, people can sign up for that. You can literally have them write their name down or you can assume if they're seniors in your community or people who have less, less access to technology that they definitely want to be on that list and it doesn't hurt to call them or, or see if they want to even be part of the phoning team that does those phone calls. That way you can make sure that everybody knows about uh, events coming up or maybe there's a funeral or something uh, even quite urgent that's come up in the church community that if they weren't on social media they didn't see the news about it but if you have a phone tree set up it's not only good for those kinds of emergencies but also even just the month-to-month -month activity of the church staying connected caring for our seniors and serving them and meeting them right where they are on the phone uh, to communicate with them about everything that's going on at the church and hear their feedback the last tip for seniors and communication is to not assume that they aren't digitally savvy. Actually, a lot of seniors today are quite comfortable with uh, FaceTiming their grandkids or checking their email every day. Maybe they're even part of a Zoom-based Bible study during the pandemic. A lot of seniors, more and more as the population ages with technology and the internet being more and more ubiquitous for all parts of life, actually a lot of seniors are very comfortable online. So don't be afraid to use digital tools. You won't necessarily be excluding everyone, but when you use digital tools, make sure to ask the question about who might be excluded. People who are not digitally literate, people who maybe don't have the financial means to afford some of the technology that would allow them to connect with the church online, or people who have you know different learning struggles that they maybe aren't able to navigate that as well. So as we do digital and we want to think of a digital first strategy overall, we have a whole video about that here if you want to check out that tutorial, but as we think about digital first, we aren't here to leave people behind. We as pastors and shepherds of people want to make sure that we carry them with us wherever, wherever we go into the future. And so we can do that through some of that personal care and some of these tips that we've talked about here. Thanks so much again to the Canadian Centre for Christian Charities for making this video possible as we're talking about here and all these other tutorials. There's just so much that goes into running a church. And when you're thinking about things like HR and finance and board governance and insurance and legal issues and taxation and all these kinds of things, that's exactly what the Canadian Centre for Christian Charities is there to help you with. You can almost think of them like a whole other staff member extension of your team. If you become a member of the four C's, you get like a a whole resource and wealth of knowledge from real people who are there to help you run your Christian charity in Canada. They're experts at things so that you don't have to be experts at all the things and you can focus on being the pastor and the leader in what God has called you to do. So I mean membership is really affordable. It starts at just 270 bucks and joining it also allows you to get access to a group health insurance plan and even a pension program if you're a smaller organization that doesn't have that on your own. So visit cccc.org to check out more information about that and the link is in the show notes. Thanks so much for checking out Word Made Digital tutorials. At wordmadedigital.com, you can find more tutorials, you can find podcasts, you can find other free resources. We are all about helping you communicate the best news in the world, the news of Jesus in the digital age. We're gonna help you navigate that through all kinds of resources we want you to check out.